Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you as we celebrate Darl Hendasa Sha'aran Partners' Golden Jubilee and the dawn of our second half century of enterprise, excellence, and endeavor. Kamal Shah is one of the world's most prominent and innovative business entrepreneurs. A passionate politician, he has actively participated in some of the most significant events in the Middle East, playing an important part in his own country of Jordan by serving as a senator for 12 years. Fifty years ago, he founded Dar al Handasa, one of the largest private engineering consultancies in the world. At the time, no one believed he could do it especially since his first and only job had been teaching. I was teaching at the time at the uh, AUB. When I told the dean, he said, if you find that you become, uh, and he drew used the word tycoon, if you find that you, you are successful, then, uh, and you want to leave, I will give you a leave of absence because you never knew, maybe you need to come back. Kamal Shah never went back to teaching at the American University of Beirut. The modern history of the Arab world is intertwined with the growth of Dar al Handasa. Kamal Shah counts a large number of politicians and activists as his friends. But by witnessing revolutions, coups, and political parties rise and fall, he began to appreciate the fact that activists change the world with little or no success in the long term. That we are part of this world and we cannot transcend it or ignore it. Kamal Shah started Dar al Handasa, believing that it was going to be the principal way in which he would exercise his activism and influence the region for the better. Projects like schools, hospitals, and irrigation schemes. And something as simple as a new road could make life better for people. Managing thousands of projects during the last half century has certainly been profitable, but it has also been a way of living out his personal philosophy. The belief that people should have the right of self-determination in free and open societies. Congratulations. You mean me? Of course we mean you. Haven't you been to the engineering faculty this morning? You've passed. Rarely among Arabs have individuals from thoroughly modest backgrounds with no access to links, networks or connections become truly global commercial players. Kamal Shair grew up in the 1930s in Salt, a small, dusty, crowded town in what was then Transjordan. When he was four years old, his father, Abdo Shair, a textile merchant, moved the family from their mud brick house to a house he had built in stone and cement. In his autobiography, Out of the Middle East, Kamal Shair wondered whether it was the building of this new house that could have stirred his first thoughts about how even simple engineering can change people's lives for the better. But his father was to do something that was even more extraordinary for a modest merchant. When Kamal Shair was five years old, he was sent to school. A decision he later felt to be the pivotal event of his life. When Abdul Shair was asked why he was wasting his money on school fees, he said that instead of leaving his money to them, he would rather invest his gold in the minds of his children. Kamal Shair's educational career led to a scholarship at the American University of Beirut. 
after which he was accepted at Michigan University and then at Yale, where he received his PhD in the peaceful use of nuclear fuel. But it was upon returning to the Middle East that his life's adventure was to begin. He convinced a few colleagues to put up the 3,500 US dollars it would take to start the company. Therefore, we wanted to create a leading edge, uh, multidisciplinary consultancy that does not include just simply one specialty that goes across all the engineering, architectural, and planning uh, disciplines. Daryl Handasa is unique amongst its peers in that the roots of the company are in the developing world rather than in the first world. I was inspired by the Lebanese culture of uh, behavior and ambition. It was the only place that we, in the Arab world that we can establish such a firm because of the quality of the human resources in Lebanon. In that environment, the qualities of leadership, the quality of free debate, the quality of freedom of the mind, the quality in people here is also to be credited to the success which we have. The young directors and staff of Dar al Handasa were all convinced that the Middle East was ripe for an Arab multidisciplinary consultancy. But the question was how to realize the opportunity. We were not the first engineers or the first architects or the first planners, but to, we, are the, we were the first institution. We got uh, a lot of applause for this, but it was an adventure. My friend, it was an adventure because we could have failed. We couldn't, but within three months, we started to get some assignments. In our second year, uh, 1957, we were awarded uh, uh, the contract for designing and supervising the biggest power station in the Arab world, which was power station C in Kuwait. Can you promise me? that you will deliver this power station on time? Yes, I can promise that. I will hold you to that promise. I never in my life saw a power station, and I was the project manager of that power station. Uh, every weekend, I would go Friday evening to Kuwait and come back Sunday evening or Monday morning to Beirut. It was in these early years that he began to realize the business philosophy which created the pillars on which Dar al-Handasa stands today.